Hello everybody. Hey, my name's Tom. I've been working on motorcycles and bicycles for over 50 years now. Um, so I've got some experience with this stuff. Um, I've recently got into e-biking uh, with the flat tire bikes. This is a set of forks off a Sire Rusher Ranger. It's very similar to many forks on a number of fat tire e-bikes. Um, so we're going to pull that apart in the next few minutes, take a look at what's inside, show you how these adjustments work internally, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something here. If you leave this bolt and this bolt and the two corresponding on the other side, here and down here, um, in place and tight, then your tubes don't rotate in the uh, clamps. And that's what you want right now because you're going to use this tool right here to break free this nut. And this nut is made out of plastic. Well, it's actually a nylon. Um, so if you don't use the correct tool, you will strip it out. This tool is a Sun Tour fork tool. Um, here are the numbers. This is the 12 tooth that actually fits the plastic side here, the left side. Um, it has other sizes here, but they don't uh, really pertain to this fork. But this is the tool you're looking for. They're about $8 on eBay. This breaks loose left side nut on the top. So this red cap here has a couple of little springs and two little ball bearings behind it that give it that little click when you turn it. Um, if you pull the center Allen, um, those two little, well four little pieces, the two springs and the two ball bearings are going to go shooting out and you're going to lose them. So do this in a very clean, organized place. It's not a bad thing to hold a towel up against this. All right, now you take your five millimeter Allen, undo your two uh, axle nuts and the bolts for the, uh, that hold the caliper in place. Wheel comes out. On this particular fork and lots of forks, there is a retainer for the brake line so that this doesn't get rub on your front wheel. Uh, use the appropriate Allen to remove that. Now we're putting our six Allen back on and we're gonna loosen our triple clamps. We've got two bolts on either side. Top and bottom. Don't have to take them all the way out, just loosen them up. Uh, stock location, I moved mine up, uh, but if yours is, headlight is here, you will have wanted to remove the bolt that holds that and either swing the headlight out of the way or unplug it. Now we're ready to just lower the forks out of the triples. You've got these rubber stops here on both just work those up and get them out of the way. And there we are. Okay, so now we're going to talk about why I'm removing this fork that was on my bike and installing this one, which is uh, the reason Cy Rusher sent me another set of forks here was because I was complaining that these were sticky and that I was having a lot of wear issues here. Um, these fork tubes are actually just painted. Um, what I did was I got a uh, early Ranger, um, early production Ranger, and what they sent me as a replacement is what I suspect are coming all, on all the current Rangers, which is a much better uh, surface finish here. This is more like a gun bluing almost. 
on this, but it's not paint, so it's not going to wear off like these. Um, I'm not going to have the paint wear issues with this sort of finish. Uh, it's probably a smoother finish. And uh, from what I can tell of uh, compressing this particular fork, I think it may actually have the 75 millimeters of travel versus the 60 millimeters that I was getting out of my original set here. One thing that's kind of interesting with these forks is all of the uh, tubes, including the steerer tube and the stanchion tubes, are all steel. So with many bikes, um, these are a hardened aluminum and uh, it's quite a weight savings over um, the steel, but the steel is incredibly strong. So that's a, a definite bonus here um, that we've got more motorcycle-like forks on here than mountain bike forks, honestly. I very much appreciate that Cyrusher sent me these updated forks. Um, one of the reasons that I bought this bike was because of the good warranty on it and their good reviews on customer service. Uh, now it's time to take my old set apart here a little bit further and we'll see what the internals look like and how the controls work. Okay, so here are all the internal parts of these forks. Um, pretty standard. Um, one side is your dampening. Um, it has this long dampening rod. So basically um, how this works is there is fluid, hydraulic fluid inside this cylinder here. Um, there's a couple of O-rings sealing it here. Um, and then within this tube that, that actually moves in and out of the, uh, little cylinder, um, is your adjuster. And if your, uh, red cap is on top here, by the way, those are the little bearings and springs that will come out if you, uh, are not careful when you're removing that red cap. Um, so you turn this one direction and essentially what it's doing is bringing some little discs within the cylinder closer together so that the, uh, oil moves through it from top to bottom, uh, slower or faster if they're further apart, um, then the little openings are, uh, more free to flow and, uh, if they're real close together, it kind of shuts it down. If you crank it all the way down, it shuts it down completely. And that's your lockout on the front. So that's from the uh, red cap side. This, these are your internals. Um, the other side is your spring. And uh, you've got this little rubber deal on the bottom here. So that when your fork extends, like when your front wheel goes up in the air, um, and extends all the way. Um, it hits this little rubber stopper here, so it you don't get a thud. Um, it's it's just a little dampening piece there. Um, this is your steel stanchion tube. Um, your spring itself, which is has quite a bit of grease on it, which is a good thing. That keeps it moving within this tube. And then this is simply a steel spacer um, that goes at the end of the tube. So you end up with this, something that's that long. Now, now at the top, your little cap that looks like this, what that's doing is this is screwed into the top of the tube here. Okay. And then uh, when you turn it counterclockwise, it cranks this little see how this is moving into the body of the cap oh. see how when I go counterclockwise this moves in into the body of the cap and if I go the other way it extends um, so there's not a whole lot of adjustment here but what that's doing is putting preload on this spring so it's essentially compressing the spring this much here 
so that um, it had just has a higher spring rate to it. So that's your entire adjustment there. Um, it's not a whole lot. So you're at about about 12 millimeters of travel in this little piston here. Um, don't crank it too far to the right because you can, I'm sure you can strip these nylon threads. So when it stops, just let it stop and then cranking it all the way back the other way to make it as soft a fork as possible. So if you turn it all the way to the left, it even says it has little tiny arrows that are really hard to read um, on the top there. Um, but if you turn it all the way to the left, that has cranked that in and that's your full adjustment. That's as soft as the fork will get right there. And again, don't overdo it. Just when it stops, it stops. Let me show you something on these forks. If you turn it all the way to the right, you've got lockout. It's, the fork doesn't compress at all. And then if you take it back one click, you start getting some movement. And two, three, four, five, six. Anything past six clicks to the left has no bearing on performance of the fork. Um, it, if, if I go, you know, another six out, it feels exactly the same as it did at six. So, um, your adjustment on these forks is crank it all the way to the right for lockout. And then your first six clicks are actually where the increments are to adjust these. So if you go beyond six, it's not doing anything other than just clicking and opening. Um, let's see what the, uh, what the new forks themselves weigh as a complete unit, even with, with the clamps and all that. They're at 10 pounds, 15 ounces, basically. Slide off the rubber stoppers and these will come right off. Now what's nice about this new finish is um, when I was sliding these old ones in and out of the triples, I actually scuffed them up a little bit. Um, but this new finish will not do that. So bonus. Make sure that your cables are on the correct side. And there we go. go. You can just run the uh, axle nuts in by hand here. Just make there that, sure that just make sure that things are gonna hold in place. Okay, now at this point I can go ahead and remove the lift from underneath here. Here kind of look and make sure your wheel's centered and tighten your axle bolts. I've got a spacer that I need to take off the old fork and put on. All right, on this adapter for the uh, larger rotor, I need to put a little bit of Loctite. Make sure that nothing comes loose. This has an arrow for up. Anytime you take off a caliper, you need to realign it with the brake rotor. And to do that, you just leave these. You leave these two bolts just finger tight 
and you come up here to the brake lever, your front brake, and you squeeze that, and you hold it. And while that's being held, you come back down here and you tighten these up. Now see if your caliper and rotor are aligned. Pick up your front wheel and spin it. You shouldn't hear any dragging. Everything should spin freely. So that sounds good. We want it. We just come in here and we tighten this up all the way. There we go. Now I'm back up here to my triple trees and I'm going to just snug them up. But don't overdo it. These kind of clamps put a huge amount of pinching force on the tubes. Um, they're not going to move if they're if they're somewhat snugged up. You don't need to overdo it. Okay, everyone. So that's the internals for the Cyrusha forks. Um, I appreciate you watching, and hopefully. This answers some questions for you on adjustments and actually what's inside these. Who's the best girl ever? <laughs>